We have never spent as much money on agriculture as we've done this season. And I'm pleased that with the blessings of Almighty, who gave us abundant rains, we are anticipating growth in agriculture. In fact, we are revising growth in the agricultural sector. We wish, in turn, we are revising the overall growth. I anticipate after the revision, our growth to be around 3.7% from 0.7% or so that we had anticipated in the 2017 national budget. Uh, we are looking at maize, we are anticipating uh, production of around 3 billion from all sectors. Command, present our input scheme, A2 farmers, A1 farmers, those who didn't benefit or who didn't subscribe to the command agriculture, all told, we are expecting a grain delivery of around 3 million metric tons. This is over and above what we we, we achieved last year of around 1 million, even less, around 750,000 uh, metric tons. We are also anticipating a bumper crop from cotton. Uh, as you may be aware, we put in 40 million free support to cotton farmers. And certainly the standing crop is looking like we are going to push our production figures from 30,000 metric tons last year to anything above 150,000 metric tons uh, this season. So the picture looks quite good. We are paying a good price. In fact, above market rates, 390 per dollars per metric ton. For, and we are promising that we will pay a, at least a week after delivery. And as you know, in the past season, we are not owing anybody. We had good payment to our farmers, whether wheat or maize. We are also expecting uh, that as we go forward in agriculture next year, in, in, in winter, we are extending the command agriculture and we have already started mobilizing the resources to make that happen. In 2017-18, we are extending the presidential input scheme. Last, this season, we supported only vulnerable households, about 800,000. This coming season, 2017-18 season, will be supporting 1.7 households. In other words, every farming household in communal areas will be able to get the presidential input scheme, which will mean one bag of fertilizer, AA, one compound, and 10 kg of seed. So I'm anticipating more active participation by the private sector in the agricultural sphere. And I think that they will get off their fences to become active and not to leave everything to government, as has been the case so far. I, I want to emphasize, of course, that we in the private sector are one family, and we should work together, and our collective effort is very important for sustainable uh, development. Uh, I always want to remind government uh, and you, of course, included, that uh, our employer's government is the private sector. They are the people who pay taxes. And it's their taxes that help us to sustain government operations, to provide service delivery, capital formation, to build dams, to support education, to support health. So it's very important that private sector and government work together. Uh, the industry basically it collapsed, but through the past three years we have been coming up with measures to resuscitate our industry. We are not yet there, but clearly the influx of cheap imports 
high cost of doing business in Zimbabwe. We are a very expensive environment to do business. Also, weak business linkages, among others, has affected the growth of our industry. So, we have taken a number of initiatives <coughs> to revive our industry. We are not yet there, but at least there are some good developments that are taking place and we need to underpin that initiative as we go forward. And to assist the industry, industrial revival, we have had to undertake international re-engagement. This is because, as you may know, certainly Zimbabwean officers will know, we are indebted to the tune of 11.2 billion, both to external creditors, 7.5, domestic, something like 3.7 7, or 3.5 billion. Now, because of that debt, we are unable to access capital internationally. And so our efforts are to see that we engage the international community with a view to clearing our areas, which are out of the 11.7.5, uh, the areas are around 5.2 billion, almost as, to the same extent as the principal <coughs> debt. We are also, as you know, those of you who are coming from outside will learn that we don't have a currency of our own. We have a, what we call a multi currency regime where all, are, all your currencies are in that basket. The rand, the pula, the kwacha, the British pound, the euro, the Indian rupee, the Chinese renminbi, they are in that basket. The United States dollar, which has of course come to dominate the <coughs> currencies in the basket. So we did this in order to tame inflation, and we did this in 2009, to tame inflation. We also found that we were getting a lot of cheap goods into our country, largely is to dump into our economy. So we took a measure by through gazetting of such or instrument 64 of 2016, to say all those imports which were coming, where we had built capacity, we said we must regulate their importation. We also have the Buy Zimbabwe agenda largely tied up to the structural instrument 64 of 2016. We want to encourage localization of production. We want to, to, to encourage use of Zimbabwean commodities versus any cheap goods that may be imported into our country. As a result, we used to run an over-liberalized foreign exchange market where anyone could come in and anyone can take out valuable foreign currency from our country. We have since, and we are still moving, away from that over-liberalized market uh, and trying to get to a position where it can be efficiently managed. And the Reserve Bank will uh, set out priorities on the usage of that foreign currency. We are also, in order to encourage foreign direct investment, engaging in an exercise on the cost and ease of doing business. And that exercise is being spearheaded by the office of the president and the cabinet. We want to look sector by sector at what is constraining foreign and domestic investment in terms of cost, in terms of a, a labyrinth of bureaucratic procedures. And we are examining sector by sector and removing those procedures which we think are impeding growth and ease of doing business. As a result of these initiatives, we have seen the level of industrial capacitation utilization rising from 34% in 2015 
to the current around 50% depending on the subsect. I need to first point out that there are some challenges arising from shortage of foreign currency. And these challenges are creating some bottlenecks with respect to importation of valuable raw materials to feed into, into our industry. Uh, I said I was going to address the issue of liquidity. Uh, as you know, we don't print US dollars. The source of our US dollars, which have come to dominate uh, circulation of currency in the country, the source is primarily two or three exports and diaspora remittances, that is, those of our relatives who are outside and who send us money for our livelihood to support us. Those are the two main sources. We could also have other sources like lines of credit, which currently is not the case because of the debt issue and the fact that we are unable to access global markets in respect of capital. Another source is loan financing. Again, a problematic in the sense that it's very difficult to access those loans. Another one, of course, a better one is foreign direct investment. But because of the situation that we are in a sanctions induced environment, we are also not able to get foreign direct investment, which will bring equity which will take risk alongside the country. <coughs> so, we currently uh, have capital levels ranging between 40 million and 246.6 million against a minimum of 25 million. So, the prudential liquidity ratio stood at 61.9% compared with minimum regulatory requirement of 30% as in December uh, last year. But what are we doing with the problem of liquidity? Through the central bank, we are